Have you had any problems yet or no? Um, kind of, sort of. Like, I kind of got to refine on how she finds properties. I have, a, I have a VA that I just hired that's looking for property ownership information and just like fine tuning. So, my what database. is she doing like wrong right now? So, so I have some. I gave her like a couple resources to check for property info. Okay. And she's only been checking one. And she hasn't started looking at the other one. Meaning, yeah, she'll like say, "Oh, this wasn't on CoStar." I'm like, "Okay, well, did you check Land Vision and Tilo?" Because a lot of the times, CoStar will have the name, but then gotcha. it'll have the, the this one will have the address, and then this gotcha, one will gotcha. have the cell phone number. So, dude, real quick, just to kind of give you like, this is just an idea. I'm not even like this could work or not. Just an idea. If that's the case, if the first place to go is CoStar, give her like a small little PDF checklist where it says like, step one. Go to CoStar and try to find as much as you can. If and then parentheses, if you can't find everything, go to Levo. go to Le Levo or whatever the hell. Yeah, yeah. Right, and then if you can't find everything, step three, go to ba ba ba, and then that's your process. Like once you're done, give me a confirmation that this has been found. Yeah, and like, that's those that's are the process. those are the systems and processes and I'm like, talking about. Dude, people don't understand. Like when you say like build systems and processes, I always used to be so confused. Okay, yeah, like, same. What does that even mean? Same. And it's literally just typing out step one, step, step two. two. And then you can make them pretty. Now we have Kelly who like makes stuff look amazing. Yeah. She just makes them like pretty them up and like. Borders super... and nice font and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dude, real quick, I want to touch on automation. Yeah. I know this is like, dude, recently, Senna's been driving, yeah, talking I mean, my ear off on the, on the automation. It's been my robot that calls Chris. It's no, not I got even, even me anymore. It's not even it's Senna my robot. anymore. I got a fake homie Senna calling me and he's just over here saying like it's just it's the same like phrases though it's the weirdest thing i don't understand yeah so that's been my new thing and chris has been on it for like a while now and i just never really like knew how to apply it to my industry or my line of work how are you applying it to commercial real estate like if another commercial real estate agent is watching this right now and he's like how the hell am i going to put automation into my thing mm -hmm. how would you how would you tell him and dude just so you know for the record, no one's ever going to do it. I know. Like, no. Go for it, dude. Tell them because they're never going to do it. It took me literally days and days to fine tune this automation thing. But it's so worth it because you literally, as commercial real estate agents, we're told, pick up the phone, make the dials. Pick up the phone, make the dials. That's how you make the money. So taking a week off and not doing that, it feels like death. You're like, I'm a lazy piece of shit. I'm not yeah. doing what's wrong with me. For sure. But really, you're working on the business rather than in the business right. to create this automation that's going to exponentially, hopefully one day, increase revenue. So how are you getting the automation to work for you right now? Yeah. And, so, and if in, in perpetuity to like actually be significant, like dude, it makes you more efficient long, for sure. long run. So but, this actually goes back to your first question when you asked, in insurance, they renew every year, right? So commission, you know commission, commission, when commission. people, more abouts are looking to renew. Yes, right? I know exactly Give or take. when people are around. So he knows exactly when. Yeah. If Chris owns an industrial property, and he and I call Chris, I'm like, hey, Chris, would you sell your industrial property? He could say, Senna, I'm not a seller. Don't call me until 10 years, right? Okay. But then three years from now, something happens. Um, you know, Chris gets another investment opportunity, so now he wants to sell in three years, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he told me not to call him for 10 years, right? So I have, I have you marked down to call Chris in 10 years. Yeah, but now you're behind the boat. Now I'm behind the boat because he's, he's looking to sell in three years. Or you could, never, you could not sell until 15 years. Yeah. So it's, it's totally different in the sense that like in insurance, you know every year something's going to happen. In real estate, you have, to, you have to properly stay in front of the person without okay. annoying them, but also being there when the transaction so is going to So how occur. do you do that? Is it... That's... Phone calls, marketing, text messages, email, well, all of the above. All of the above. And that's the hard part, right? Is like, how much is too much? Some guy like wants to be updated on what his property is doing every two weeks. Another guy like mm. doesn't care. Another guy is like, how do you, send know, how do you know that they want two weeks? Some guys want two weeks, some don't. Because like you'll send them stuff and they'll, t they'll call you back like, hey, Senna, I appreciate it. But like, look, I'm a straight shooter. Like, I'm not ready for six months. Like. And then maybe you can pay. So I think the only way, because if you're doing big. But rule of thumb real yeah, quick ahead, before you say that. When someone tells you, hey, call me in six months, you call them in three. Yeah. And sometimes I'll tell them to, that I'm going to do that. Like, hey, I appreciate that. I'll call you in three months because I know Mike, how this Look, works. I know you said six. Yeah, Let's yeah. be real, man. You're, you're going to forget about you're, me in you're two gonna weeks. You're going to forget. 
Dude, yeah. yeah, no, there's no chance next month you're going to remember my name. I'm going to call you in three. Yeah. And we'll get something going. Yeah, exactly. Some some stuff like that. And so, so, Wait, I so anyways, you you're going to ask. Um, shoot, I lost what I was going to say. Shit, sorry. But no, it's all good. What I was going to say, I think, uh, was, yeah, oh, yeah, I got it. So the, the, there's a middle ground. If you know that there's a guy that needs like two, that he likes everything two weeks, there's a guy that's one once a month. One guy one. don't talk to me for a year. You kind of have to find this balance yeah. of somewhere in between because you can't be you can't tailor every automation to every single person. It defeats the purpose no, yeah. of the whole campaign. Exactly. The campaign is you to, want it personalized. Yeah. Well, it's a law. It's the law of large numbers, dude. When you're working with bigger numbers, like when you're cold calling people, you're going after as you would do if you had unlimited time. How many cold calls would you do? Unlimited cold calls. As right? many as I could. As many yeah. as you possibly could. So automation. You have an unlimited amount of numbers, like automate as much as you can. Right, hundred percent. Do as much as, as big of numbers as you can. So the point is finding that balance where it's like, this guy likes two weeks, this guy likes a year, this guy likes two years, this guy likes three months. Let's meet in the middle every month or mm -hmm. six months or whatever, just to kind of keep everybody as happy as possible, and then try to catch as much as you can because it's right. ultimately a funnel. Yeah, and you're working with a funnel, and you have to be okay with some are going to get messed up right like you're gonna mess some up Especially initially when, hopefully dude and maybe you fine tune in it gets better and less leak out of the funnel yeah you right? know yeah you constantly refine that funnel and it's gonna get better and better but um, you'll always have leakage you'll always do yeah. like I, I told you stories like when i first started i didn't even know what i was doing so i had oh my gosh but i knew i was like i'm gonna mess all this up and I'm going to fix everything. Yeah. I'm just like, you have to be prepared to fix stuff yeah. constantly. When you're running a business and you're running any sales-oriented organization or, or operation, be prepared to make mistakes and quickly fix them. And you're better off messing them up fast. Yeah. Like, do it fast. 100%. Go fast. And, like, speed is of the, time is of the essence yeah. when it comes to sales and money. Yep. You don't want to waste time. And, and so that's why the automation is so important because, like, the more you can have contacts out, Dude, how's yeah. that going so far? Do you have the campaigns running? I just got. Like, I don't, do you I have, don't, have you had anybody respond? No, yeah. I haven't run in. I I ran. I so this also goes back to what you were saying. How like or what we were talking about earlier? How when you're first starting out, you don't even know what tools, what technology, what software is available to you, how to even utilize it. Yeah, good. hopefully it's still working. Yeah, we're good. Um. Yeah, you don't even know like what's out there and how you can efficiently um, make use it work them. for you and use them. Yeah. So you know you may only find ten software programs, but really there's a hundred, right? And you just don't know. That's why he's saying go fast because the first because once you run through the first ten, then you're like, okay, now I can. Look dude, the we're so just then, operators, dude. That's yeah. really what we are. We're just operating systems and processes and trying to make a, a an efficient machine the most efficient possible machine that generates income to get extremely wealthy and just buy some yachts so we can go and just <laughs> cheer some more drinks on the yacht. exactly yachts. cheers to that dude some good stuff cheers mate cheers and we're right on our way